Hear now these words from the Apostle Paul. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast, for we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, May the words of my mouth and the thoughts resting upon each one of our hearts and minds, may they all be acceptable to you, you who are today and forever our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Every year, I say without hesitation that one of the best things about annual conference is worship. Business is business, and our common business as an annual conference is certainly necessary and it is important, but worship consistently inspires. In this, my shorter than typical message, I promise, I plan to draw your attention to the scripture passage that I just read that informed our entire week and inspired the theme of our week, Christ alive in us. I will also share with you some memorable insights from this week's preachers. Because annual conference is live streamed like our Sunday morning worship services, I extend to all of you the invitation to go to the EOCUMC.com website and watch the services yourself. They're all there. Now, I invite you to join me in looking more closely at this second chapter of Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus. The passage begins with sin's prevalence, impact on our lives. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived. Time and again throughout scripture, we are reminded of sin's very bad influence in the lives of God's human creation. The reason sin is so bad is because it's that which is contrary to the will and the purpose of God. It's that which separates us from God. To sin or trespass, another word used for sin, is to take the wrong road when we could take the right one. It is to miss the truth that we really should have known. It is to fail to reach the goal we have, we need to and should be reaching. It is to fail to be what we ought to be and really could be with Christ. These failures are, are all because we choose to live life on our own terms, apart from God, and with a distorted view of what's important in life. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together 
with Christ. The good news and our only hope of moving away from sin's strong influence is to know God's mercy and love as revealed so profoundly to us in the life and the death of Jesus. Now, did you happen to notice in this passage Paul's usage of the plural pronouns? He didn't say I, he didn't say me. He used the pronouns us and we. And the emphasis that being made alive is accomplished together. One of the preachers this past week focused on the importance of us. Paul says that when we were dead because of our sins, God's love made us alive together with Christ. To be alive in Christ is to move from a place of sin where we live according to the world's focus on me and mine into God's kingdom where our focus becomes us and our so let's consider for a moment the us that has formed your life. Your us may have been experienced during Sunday morning worship or Sunday school. Perhaps it was during youth group hangouts or summer church camp. Perhaps your us was experienced while participating in a mission trip UMW circle meetings, prayer breakfast gatherings, or even committee meetings. Yes, I believe that us, the us of being alive in Christ can be experienced even in the midst of committee meetings. This experience and understanding of us-ness is central to who we are as Christians. To know that Christ is alive in you and me is to know that Christ is alive in us, all of us. The more we see and experience the reality of this us-ness in Christ, the better we will see the reality that God is everywhere and in everyone. Therefore, if our actions push down or harm anyone else, then ultimately, we also harm ourselves. Too often these days, our seeing and embracing of us-ness is pushed aside by the attitude of me versus him, her, them. For by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now we know that good works do not save us. The New Testament is clear and definitive on that point. However, good works is what happens naturally when Christ is alive in us. Through us, Jesus breathes and lives and is physically available and responsive to the suffering and injustice of the world. Being alive in Christ is about Jesus compelling us to go out, to show up, and to be a part of the bigger blessing of the world's usness. We know that Jesus is already out there working in the lives of others. And he just wants you and me, he wants us to join him in that work. Being alive in Christ is about showing up and being about the good work of Christ. Let's face it, all of us who have sought and found Jesus we know that following and serving is the next step. To understand that the church is a part of God's continuing plan for the redemption and salvation of the world is to believe and embrace that we, each one of us, are graced by God and gifted 
for good. That point was emphasized by Bishop Boydoin, the Bishop of the Northwestern Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, when he preached on Wednesday's commissioning and ordination service. It's common practice to invite another bishop to participate in that service, and often these days that bishop is not United Methodist, a different bishop. Well, during his sermon, he reminded us that this past Thursday, June 17th, was the sixth anniversary of the shooting and murder of nine African-American worshipers, six women, three men, at the Emmanuel AME Church in Charleston. Now, something I didn't know, but the bishop knew, was that the man convicted of that horrendous act grew up in the Lutheran Church. The bishop wondered about that man and the fact that somehow he had failed to hear and learn and take to heart the love and mercy of God revealed in Jesus Christ. And as he wondered about that man, he also wondered about the ways that the church in which that man grew up might have failed to teach, show, embody Christ, might have failed to reveal that we are graced by God and gifted for the good. As Bishop Bodoin won wondered about all of that, I found myself wondering as well, wondering not only about the church in which I grew up and in which I loved, but, but every church, every church in which I have served. To know God's grace is to share God's grace by doing good. One of the blessings of this past week as um, already actually mentioned by Jackie, was the inserting of those moments, those Christ Alive in Us video moments. Those moments reflecting many different ministries going on here in East Ohio. And those video segments are also on the EOC UMC website. So I encourage you to watch them. They are only two to six minutes long, depending on the video. And I especially recommend the conference mission one, like Jackie, and also the Teach, Reach, and Bless videos in which we are able to hear from students of Africa University. Today, as I end my attempt to share a recap message with you, I encourage you to consider and to take to heart what it means, what it looks like for Christ to be alive in you. It really should look like Christ's good works of love and mercy being accomplished through you in the world. It should look like you embracing the usness of life in Christ by stepping outside the doors of this church, the doors of your home, perhaps even the closed doors of your own heart, so that you might be Christ's presence of help hope and transformation in the world. May Christ be visibly alive in each one of us to the glory of God. Amen and amen.